Hey everybody out there, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial about JUnit testing using Eclipse. So what is JUnit testing? JUnit testing is uh, an easy way to be able to, cr to write tests for the methods that you write for software, whatever you need. Um, it's, you know, industry standard, lots of people use it, and it makes it a lot easier than just writing a bunch of if statements, which is what I did with this class, and you can see that it gets pretty messy just, you know, not, not using JUnit testing. So this, this class has about 400 lines of, of testing code that, you know, could be super impossible to find where the actual problem is. So this example here, I have a couple others that show what the unit tests look like. So here it you know, sets up our, our instance variables, everything that we're going to use. It adds the numbers, whatever we need it um, to be able to test with. And then here are the tests. So this is adding or testing the add first method from our linked list uh, class. And so it basically has a method assert equals that we're that the expected values is going to be in the first or the you know the zero slot of the list and then we want to test the list that that's the actual spot let's look at this so here it's showing that everything's passing here's our add first method you know it took 0 0.001 seconds to run it and over here if it did fail it would show what the the issue was so let's take a quick look at what the other methods are that we can use to test with. So this comes from the assert class under the JUnit testing package and has a bunch of different methods. You can see assert null, assert true, so it'll test a Boolean condition on your method that you're testing. So I'd, I'd highly recommend to come out and check this out. This is found on JUnit.SourceForge.net. You can Google JUnit testing and it'll bring up tons and tons of stuff about JUnit testing. So let's look at our quick example of, of what we're going to be testing today. So I, I just wrote a quick class of a few methods. So this method is add three numbers. It's going to just simply add, add three numbers up. We'll test to make sure that it we get the correct number. Um, this multiplies three numbers together and adds them up. This one takes in a, in a, an array of numbers and it will um, use a for loop to cycle through each one and add them up and then add them to a string for a nice printout of the whole string and, and what's it, what it's doing. This method will take in a boolean, um, you know, really any boolean, and it will check if it's false. If it's false, it would return false. Otherwise, it'll return true. So if it's gonna, if it takes in true, it'll return true as well. So it just takes in the boolean that and returns the boolean that you enter. So let's set up our our JUnit testing. So we're gonna click on the class that we want to test for. So right click on it, select New and Other, and we're gonna scroll down and find JUnit. And we're gonna click on JUnit test case. Click our next button. So we want to make sure we select JUnit3 testing. And then we're going to create a class. Um, this one already exists, so we'll just add a 1 to it. And it doesn't like that I have a lowercase letter with it. So we also want to make sure that setup and teardown are selected. These are the two methods that are basically inherited that will will run each each time the methods are tested. So we'll select next. And then this allows us to easily select the methods that we want to be testing from our example class. So we're going to test all of these. So once we select finish, it'll create a method stub for each of those and then already puts this fail not, not yet implemented. And when we were to run that, it will show that all of those fail um, and, and you can see the feedback that it gives us not yet implemented. So let's go ahead and start implementing these and, and testing. So when 
when you're doing JUnit testing, you want to start thinking of how you want to test each method. You want to be thorough and make sure that you're testing all the possibilities that could go wrong and even the possibilities that are going to go right and what's expected. That's that's what you want to be thinking of. So, so you want to be thorough with your testing. So for example, this add three numbers method it takes in the three parameters, adds them up, and returns the, the correct answer. So you want to be thorough with your testing. So for example, this add three numbers method takes in three parameters. It adds them all together and returns the total. So you want to obviously test for that. But say there was a constraint on this method that it didn't accept the number zero. And so, it, you know, have your code there and you just want to make sure you test for that and make sure that, you know, if you did throw out the, the number zero, that it would do the correct things and, you know, wouldn't allow you to do that. So let's go back to our testing method. So here we have our first one. Let's just go ahead and do some quick setup. Let me just grab um, two quick lines. And so we just want to add this up here before we start our testing. So this is just an array that we're going to use that has 10 numbers in it. We're going to add those up together. And this is what we're going to refer to for one of our tests. So for this test, add three numbers. Let's write our method. So we're going to assert equals, if I can spell. So assert equals, we will have equal six. And we're going to add up, add the three letters together. So example dot add three numbers. We'll add one, two, and three. And they should all equal six when we run that. So let's run it. And here we have our test add three numbers method that was run. Doesn't have it, it passed. Say we accidentally put in the wrong number. Or if it you know wasn't working, it would show us. So this is the feedback that feedback that it gives us. So it says that it's expecting seven, but the method actually returned six. So obviously we, we know that we changed it, but this is you know it gives some great feedback. It shows the line that it's coming from. You can so you can look at it and say, all right, so the add three numbers method is doing something wrong, or yeah, maybe I did enter the wrong number. So let's do our multiply three numbers. So just another assert equals method. We're going to have it. We're expecting 200. And the reason I'm calling this example is just how it's just how you call the class. And then you can, we could create a, an object, but they're all static methods. So it wouldn't, wouldn't really work. But anyway, so our example dot multiply three numbers. We're going to multiply 10 by 10 by 2. And let's run that, make sure it works. So yeah, here it shows that it works. We still have two failures, but just because we haven't implemented those yet. So let's add our array of numbers up. So this one, assert um, equals again. And we're going to use our actual. That's what we're comparing it with. And we'll call our example dot add array of numbers and we'll put in our array Oops. all right so we'll run that passes let's change our actual just to see what would happen make sure everything still works so now it's showing that our test add array of numbers test did not work so here we can come over and get our feedback so it's showing that there was a one in the expected um, but it was should have been a two so we know that that obviously works so basically that's testing a string because that's what we're giving it so it's comparing the two strings and making sure that they're exactly the same you know this one these are testing integers there's you know you can test doubles lots of other different primitives you can test objects make sure that the objects point to each other those ones you have to be a little bit more careful because the object it, it's usually the address so you have to get a little creative that way anyways so let's do this test is false method so this one we're going to use a different testing method so we're going to assert false and we're going to just do example dot is false and we're going to give it that it will be false so we know that this method 
if you whatever you give it that's what it would return and you know it should return false if we give it false so let's also do assert true Oops. example dot is false we'll give it true and let's run that and so it shows everything passed um, gives us our total time so that was just a quick example of JUnit testing. Go out and experiment with it more. Hopefully this helps you get a, a, a simple idea of, of how useful and how easy JUnit testing is. It, it is. it is a lot easier than just writing a bunch of if statements and printing out method or printing out error statements. This keeps it clean and nice, nice and tidy. Thanks for watching everyone.